Hi, I'm Debbie Rivera, and I'm manager of the NASA LEGO Partnerships, and I want to welcome you all to the Google Plus Hangout. We're here today to talk about our NASA LEGO competition. It's called NASA's Missions, Imagine and Build. This event is an opportunity to discuss the, co the competition and to find out how you can enter a futuristic design of your own. The competition is currently open and it will end on July 31st and that means there's only 15 more days. So we're going to be taking some real-time questions using the, using the hashtag AskLego on Twitter or from the NASA Google page during the event. We also have opened up a thread on NASA's Facebook page where you can post questions. So now I'd like to introduce the team. Leland? Good morning. My name is Leland Melvin. I'm the Associate Administrator for Education, and I'm very excited to be here. And I'm a former astronaut, too, so let's build the future in a very grand way. Hi, I'm April Lanat, and I'm an Einstein Educational Fellow working at NASA headquarters with the Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate. So I'll be answering your questions today that have to do with any of your aeronautics questions. And how about our LEGO friends? I'll go first. Um, my name is Sarah Moore. I'm an online community specialist at the LEGO Group. I uh, work on a platform called Rebrick.com where the contest is being hosted. It's a community site for teen and adult fans of LEGO Bricks. And Freddie? Hi, uh, my name is Fleur Regan, which is very hard to pronounce, so feel free to call me Freddie. Um, I work with Sarah at the LEGO Group. I'm a community editor and working at Rebrick. Great, so that's our team, and we do have a lot of questions, so we're going to get going right away. Let me take the first question. I want to take part, but I don't really own any Lego bricks. How can I participate? Uh, Freddie or Sam, I mean, Freddie or Sarah, would you like to take that question? Sure. Um, it's fine if you don't any, own any Lego bricks because um, our Inventing the Future Flight competition actually invites you to use LEGO Digital Designer, which is free software provided by the LEGO Group, um, which you can design the accompanying prototype to go with your research paper. And a link to this program is actually on the rules page on rubric.com, and I think you can get to it on lego.com as well. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, now we're going to go to one of the questions we came that came to us from the Google Plus line, and it's from Crystal. The question is, would it only be design models, or should the spacecraft have the ability to launch? And I believe um, that is a great question, but we're really looking at the design models. Would anybody else like to care to answer that, April? Sure. I'll take a stab at that. So. All these design models are just prototypes, and so it's basically what it looks like. It doesn't have to fly or launch. So all you need to do is build your prototype, and it can sit on a LEGO base plate or not. Um, I'll show you here. We have one of our, our NASA models, and this right here is just a prototype, so it doesn't fly, it doesn't function, but it has all the components on it that it would if it was a real working model. So no, it doesn't have to be a mo working model. Great question. Thanks. Okay, Crystal, we want to see those designs, okay? By the 31st, 15 more days. If you've just joined us, we are talking about the NASA LEGO partnership called NASA's Missions, Imagine and Build. We're here to talk about the competition, and we have um, 15 days left in the competition to get your designs in. I have with me today Leland Melvin and April Lenotte, and from the LEGO group, we have Freddie and Sarah. So um, thank you very much for people to bring in their questions. And here's another one. Can we use stickers on the model if they're official LEGO stickers? Um, Sarah or Freddie, would you like to answer that question? Yes, uh, you can absolutely use stickers. Um, the only exception is uh, that's uh, stickers that you use either the NASA or the LEGO logo. Unfortunately, we cannot use any models using these logos, as that would imply that we're endorsing that entry. But other stickers are absolutely all right. 
Great. Thank you very much. Um, we have another question. And this one, I think, Leland, you should be able to answer this I'll one. Try. Okay. Um, she says, I am 12 years old and I can't enter the competition because, you know, this competition right. is for 13 years old plus. Will there be other NASA or LEGO contests coming up? Well, there are some really cool contests going on right now. There's one called the Exploration Design Challenge. It's for uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. If you go to nasa.gov slash education, you can see this design challenge. It's where we have students building radiation shields to actually fly on the Orion vehicle. So it's really cool. Check it out. You'll learn about radiation, um, how you can protect yourselves, how astronauts can protect themselves going to Mars one day. And so it's a, it's a really cool competition. There are other things that are out there that you can do. Just go to nasa.gov slash education. And you'll see some of the cool things that we do at NASA for education. Awesome. And thanks so much for that, Leland. Um, also, we ha do have a follow-up question for Leland. And that one is, will you be one of the competition judges? Well, yes, I will. Myself and another NASA colleague and two designers will be judging all of the contestants. So get your design in. 15 days left, and we want to see some really cool, way out there, exotic, futuristic stuff. Because these designs may one day be what our designers and engineers here use at NASA to build a, I don't know, build the next vehicle that's going to Mars. So be very creative, be very open. And some of these futuristic airplanes that April's showing you right here, you know, those are the designs that we want to see your, your best work. So looking forward to that. You know, and speaking of April and the aeronautics missions, um, one another question that we have had is this inventing the future of flight competition requires a technical paper. April, can you tell us what is involved in that technical paper? Sure, I'd love to. So the technical paper, don't let yourselves be scared off by the term technical paper. So what we want to know is we want to know more about your designs. So you have all these great ideas and all these great designs, but you need to be able to show it off. And so what we need is we need a paper that goes along with it. And the paper explains what your prototype is, explains your design, and it also explains why it would fit well with what we're working on right now. So if you take your technical paper, if you, you just add your details of your, of your design, and that'll be great. If you go to the, the Rebrick site, it'll tell you all the details for the paper. It takes you through it step by step, so you don't have to worry about starting from scratch. It'll tell you exactly what we want, but we basically want an explanation of your aircraft and why it's so great. Awesome. So don't be afraid. But did I tell you you only have 15 more days? Okay. So um, moving on, we have a question from Twitter. Uh, Courtney has asked this particular question, and it's a, a really good one. Uh, it's talking about what exactly is the goal of the competition, and I'm going to answer the one like how how it, what the goal is for NASA and for Lego, but then I think there's also another aspect of that question, is, and that is what is the goal of the competition for the folks that are actually um, entering their designs. So let's start with the first one. The first one is, what is NASA and LEGO, why is NASA and LEGO doing this competition? We came into, uh, many years ago, a really terrific partnership, NASA and LEGO, because we had mutual things that we wanted to do. And one of it was, how can we get uh, information about our products and missions out in an innovative way that would capture the interests and engagement of the public. Well, one of the things that we're doing is this competition. Through you taking a look at what NASA is doing uh, in their missions, and uh, we, um, we have uh, just a lot of missions to talk about, but with this focused competition, we can, um, we can see what you guys can find out about NASA. You can go to nasa.gov find out all about our missions, and that helps us get our story out to you, okay? So that is one of the major goals for NASA, and I think LEGO also has some, so when um, they're able, they can, they can give you their goals of the competition. So before we go to that second part of what, what are the goals, 
Uh, Courtney, I'd like to see if Freddie might be able to give us an answer of what the LEGO goals are for the competition. Freddie? Well, some of the goals for, for most of our LEGO fans are also great fans of, of space and aeronautics and, and NASA. So that's, you know, for LEGO it's a great opportunity. And for the fans it's an amazing opportunity to, to do, to combine those two interests. Um, and I think that's what really is, is piquing an interest um, for, for LEGO, the LEGO group but also for the LEGO fans. Um, and obviously, for the Lego fan, it's it's you know there's nothing cool than to say that that you've won something with NASA. So I think that in itself is a, is a is a pretty awesome goal. And I just think another another really cool goal of this this partnership is that we're getting people that maybe never have thought of themselves as being scientists and engineers, and they're building something, developing something, creating something that may one day end up as the model of, you know, the vehicle going to Mars. And so I think we're, we're, we're sharing with LEGO fan base, you know, the principles of design and building of these futuristic vehicles and these futuristic satellites and, you know, robots, whatever we build. Um, but we have a whole new group of people that are now learning more about NASA and how we can save our planet from an asteroid one day. Or how we can save, you know, yeah. get astronauts to to Mars safely. So I think that's another big goal is to let this whole base of people in our in the world, because everyone knows what Legos are, you know, to to know about what we're doing at NASA, and it can you're, help everyone. You're absolutely From right. Radiation to space to everything. Exactly. And I, I think it goes both ways because for a lot of people who um, work with Lego on a uh, breaks on a, on a general basis. They might not think that they are engineers and have the capability of building. And on the other hand, people who are used to to engineering and building may not think of the Lego brick as as a tool to build. So okay. it's it's really a, a fun combination. Awesome. Um, we have a, another question from uh, Google Plus. And that's, um, forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Rishoff. And uh, he, they would like to know, um, can an adult participate in this event with a teen? And April, would you like to take that question? Absolutely. So the answer is yes, you can definitely join as a team. And we would love to see exactly that kind of, that kind of team going. So we have two categories. If you're working on the, um, on the inventing the future of flight, there's a young builders category that's for ages 13 through 18. And if you're that age, you're automatically entered into that category. However, you're not limited. You're also a part of the larger category. If you enter with an adult, all it does is doesn't qualify you for the young builders category because you have two people in the contest. But definitely enter, and that would be a great partnership. You'd probably come up with some great ideas that one, if you entered by yourself, wouldn't come up with. So please do. Great. Great, thanks so much. Okay, um, looking for the next question. Um, and uh, while we're talking about um, things to think about for designing and entering into the competition, there is a question for April. And that is, I have a great idea for an unmanned aircraft design. Does the aircraft need to have a pilot? That's another great question. And no, you don't have to have a pilot. Aircraft of the future are going to be flying in all kinds of ways, some that we know about and some that we don't even know about. Unmanned aircraft are really starting to become more and more prominent and more designs are, are going on with that. So note, your airplane does not have to have a pilot. We want to see exactly what you can come up with. Like we said, it's the future of flight, so that can be pretty much anything you can imagine. So the sky's the limit. Terrific. It's Great. not the sky is the limit, right? Sorry, yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah, there the is no limit. When the footprint's on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> what is the limit, Leland? I don't know the limit. But okay, I know it's, but it's the up there. on the moon, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's the sky. Moon and beyond. <laughs> That's right. Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's see. Um, in case you have just joined us, we are here at a Google Plus Hangout. We're talking about the NASA LEGO partnership competition called NASA's Missions, Imagine and Build. 
I'm Debbie Rivera and I head up the NASA LEGO Partnership and with me today is Leland Melvin as well as April Lenat and uh, we have two folks from LEGO, um, Freddie Hoff and Sarah Moore. So um, what we're doing is we are getting your questions off of Twitter with a hashtag of AskLEGO and also um, we have the Google Plus where you can post your questions and a thread off of NASA's Facebook page. So with that uh, we're going to start answering some more questions. Um, I have a quick question. Hey, right here from the studio we well, have Leland Melvin with a question. How big a team can we have? Is it limited to Great a question. number? We have a limit of up to five people on five a team. Five people per team? Okay. Right. So if you have more than that, just feel free to split into separate teams and get busy with your, with your designs. Okay. Remember, and, and exactly, and that's a great question because then what I'd like to do, because some people may be new to the Google Plus Hangout, um, Freddie, maybe you want to, Freddie or Sarah, maybe you want to just um, restate that there's two parts of the competition and what those two competitions are. So, um, the, the overall competition has two parts. One is the Inventing Our Future of Flight competition. Um, now, this is uh, sort of the academic part of it, which is uh, where you write an academic paper and at the same time you that. build a model to go with that paper. The other competition is our um, Imagine Our Future Beyond Earth competition, we don't have Sarah. which is more of a free build competition, which is um, where you build whatever your imagine holds from one of the future NASA missions until 2030, I think. Um, so they're, they're both very exciting and very different. And uh, what you can do to read up on them is to go to, to rebrick.com. Um, there's a big banner right on the front page. Um, and if you click on that, and that will take you to, to the rules for both of the competitions. Great. Thanks a lot, Freddie. Um, in fact, here's one from some of our friends in Huntsville, Alabama. This is coming in from Google+. Plus. As many of you know, we have a NASA Field Center down there. And Wesley says, I live in Huntsville where NASA is huge. <laughs> How can I engage LEGO to do something like this for younger kids? So I think this is a very appropriate question for our friend, Freddie. Um, I am pretty sure that, that um, the LEGO group would be interested in, in doing something for younger kids as well. Um, I think the best thing to do is to, to you know, get a hold of, of both LEGO, the LEGO group and, and NASA, write an email, come with a suggestion of what you think would be a cool idea. Um, I certainly know that we've been really excited about this collaboration so I don't see why there wouldn't be a possibility of another collaboration in the future. And I, I think definitely if you're a younger kid and you're, you know, you're 13 or younger, well 12 or younger, you know, create something, build something and then post your design out there for the world to see. And there may be other people besides LEGO or even NASA that may like your design and want to bring you on to start a new competition. So don't just limit yourself, you know, use your own mind to be creative and build, develop, create, and someone may say that's one of the most innovative things that I've seen and take that. So don't, don't limit yourself. You can do anything you put your mind to. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, um, we have another question from our Google Plus uh, group and this is from Jorge and this is to April. Um, our children are from Mexico. Can they participate in this competition? Definitely. As long as you are 13 and over, then you're open to participate from anywhere around the world. Teammates can be right there with each other, or you can even collaborate across continents if you have other teammates in other countries that want to participate. So everybody is free to participate. Now, with, with the design software, can you collaborate across 
you know, from different different computers. Yeah, okay. so you can so when you use the Lego Digital Designer, if that's what you're using, you go in, you create your prototype, you create, you design your build, and you save it just like a regular file. Everyone would have to have nice. the same software on their computer, but you can send it to each other, work on it, send it back. It would be a great way to collaborate. And that's how we collaborate here at NASA. We work with partners from all around the world to build the International Space Station. And sometimes these parts have never come together on the ground, but they come together in space. And so that's how we do designs. And with the, with the first competition for aviation, you're writing this technical paper. This paper helps you with design. You know, if you were working with someone else, how could this other person start to build your design? So that paper can help. Exactly. Help with that. And that's the whole point of the competition is to make it as realistic as exactly. possible. NASA collaborates with each other. We have 10 different centers across the country. And then, like you said, we're cooperating internationally as well. And so we want this to be, you know, based on real life scenarios. So when it comes to the aviation contest, we're designing it after a program that we call N plus 3. And what that is, is taking NASA's next generation, not just the next generation, but the generation after that and the third generation after that and looking at what aircraft will look like 10, 20, 30 years in the future. And right now, university and commercial teams are working on these designs like you see right here. These are done by college students and, um, and commercial partners working together. Again, remotely, they don't always see each other, they're working on teams spread out all over the place. And so the idea and the reason we have the technical paper is so that it matches just what those people are doing. So we want to see what everybody else can build. Just because a university student's building it doesn't mean that you can't come up with a design that might be something completely unique and something that someone else may never have thought of before. So we want to see what you can do too. Exactly. Yeah. Great. I just want to interject here. This is Sarah again. Um, when Going back to the question about um, countries that can participate, um, it's fine. Mexico is fine for participation, but we do have a few um, areas that are, you know, we just can't um, due to the air, the own country's rules have participation. You know, places like Cuba, North Korea, um, that, those kinds of locations. Um, it's all listed in our rules on rebrick.com. So if you're concerned about your country. Um, of origin, please check out uh, rebrick.com. Great point. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, as a matter of fact, while we are talking to our Lego fan folks over there, um, whether it's in Connecticut or Denmark today, Sarah or Freddie, um, I would like to give you a question from Courtney uh, over Twitter, and that is, how would you pick a winner? Hi, I'll take that. Um, Winners are picked by a panel of judges, depending on the competition. Um, for our Inventing uh, the Future of Flight competition, uh, Leland will be one of the judges there. I think he'll be a judge in both of the competitions, I believe, actually. So it's yeah, really it's... making him happy that you have to, <laughs> to cater to. Um, but we also will have um, we also have another engineer from NASA, I believe, and a Lego specialist as well for that competition. And then and in the other competition, the free build, imagine the future beyond Earth, that will have two Lego designers as the judge along with Leland. So they will pick the best model. <laughs> and um, just to add that, add to that. Uh, in the rules and what have you, uh, Sarah, is there some more information about what folks are looking for? Yes, absolutely. Um, they will be judged on a, a couple of criteria, which can be found on the rules, or I'll just pull that up real quickly right now. Um, so for the uh, for the Imagine the Future Beyond Earth, um, the winning model will be judged based on over, overall coolness and creativity, inspired originality, and the Imagine Our Future Beyond Earth theme. And for the other set of rules, I have it all hard copied, so I have to rifle through it a little bit. Um, the research paper academic one will be judged on a quite an extensive list of criteria which you can find on the rules page there um, based on the, you know, the physical model in the research paper as well. That's very helpful. Thanks, Sarah. And uh, again, like she said, just go to rebrick.lego.com 
and you can get all the information. So for those of you who have just joined us uh, on our Google Plus Hangout, I'm Debbie Rivera. I'm head of NASA's and NASA LEGO Partnerships. And we're here to discuss the latest competition, and that is called NASA's Missions Imagine and Build. Uh, the competition is open, but it does close on July 31st. So we're using um, the Google Plus to talk about the competition. And with me today is Leland Melvin, head of the uh, education office here at NASA and former uh, two-time shuttle astronaut. And then we have April Lenat. She's our Einstein Fellow um, that works in the Aeronautics Research Mission Directorate. Our LEGO uh, folks, um, one of which is Sarah Moore in Connecticut, and the other one is Freddie Hoff, and she is coming to us from Denmark. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. And I think we're looking for our next question. If you can just wait one momento, as my, my lovely assistant is writing it down <laughs> on a piece of paper. Your smiling, lovely assistant, right? Otherwise known as Cindy Steele. I'll give her kudos while she is embarrassed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but she's still writing, so hold on just a moment. And Sarah mentioned the coolness factor, you know, as we're judging these, these different models, you know, how cool and imaginative you can be when you design these, and how functional, too. So, looking yeah. forward to seeing them. We don't want a model of something that already exists. We want something that you can think of that is totally different than anything we've thought of before. Excellent. Okay, so, we have a question from Twitter, and it's from Carpour, and uh, here's the question. What is the best way to approach NASA with ideas for public relations? Aha. Well, I think you're the best person for that. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> the best way to uh, connect with NASA on any of your ideas is probably through the um, public, you know, you can write to NASA, you can write to Charlie Bolden, or you can write to David Weaver, who's the um, head of the Office of Communications, and give us your ideas through that way. There may be something on www.nasa.gov that can provide input, but um, I would suggest uh, for public relations, why don't you uh, connect with uh, David Weaver at NASA Headquarters um, Office of Communications? And my lovely assistant in my ear is telling me another way for you all to uh, give us um, some input, and that is through email. And what was that lovely assistant? Um, what lovely assistant? What was that uh, email thingy again? public-inquiries at nasa.gov. So that's, wait, 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 stand by. Public.inquiries, <laughs> rewind, okay, help me people. Public dot dash, public dash inquiries at all right, one more time with gusto. Public-inquiries at hq.nasa.gov. See how well this works? Okay. Um, terrific. Well, uh, let's see. Um, there is another question here. Um, have we really talked about the prizes that are going to be about. happening for the not. people who no. are winners. I um, I think we should, yeah. I, you know, because, come on, it is a competition. I like prizes. Exactly. A winner should, should be able to get something for their efforts. Um, Freddie or Sarah, do you want to talk about that? Or otherwise, we'll, we will. Well, you know, aside from the obvious prize of, of winning these awesome competitions. We do have some physical prices as well, um, and they're 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 pretty cool. Um, for the inventing our future flight competition, um, the prizes 
winner will will get a Lego trophy, which is really really cool. Um, a collection <laughs> of commemorable NASA memorabilia, um, and a virtual presentation of the project to NASA and Lego specialists. So that's you know a pretty awesome prize I think. Um, and for our um, Imagine our future beyond Earth for that competition. Sarah, do you want to take that one? Sure, I'll handle that. I just had to unmute my microphone. Um, this For this competition, we are actually giving away a signed uh, Lego Kusa Hayabusa set, which is a satellite that was launched into space in collaboration with NASA and a Japanese agency. And it, it's a Lego model of the satellite. We're not giving you the actual satellite. Um, and we're also giving away the upcoming uh, Mars Rover Lego Kuso set. So this is a, a brand new, just announced set uh, once it's available in early 2014 that um, was submitted by a fan. And it looks just like the rover on Mars right now. And it's a, it's a very, very cool item, very rare and exclusive. And uh, along with that, we're also getting a collection of uh, NASA memorabilia to go along with those, those LEGO prizes. And let me tell you, that memorabilia is awesome. I'll even, I think I'll even throw in my last mission. I'll throw in a couple of mission patches, flown mission patches, too, for the winners. How's that? Now, you, breaking they news. They only have 4.9 million miles on them, so it's not that far, but... Yeah. We're going to throw that in, too. Well, that's awesome. That is very generous of you, Leland. Awesome. Very cool. Breaking news, breaking news here at um, the NASA Google Plus Hangout. For those of you who have joined us, uh, we're a little bit beyond midway. Um, Debbie Rivera, and I'm the lead for the NASA LEGO Partnerships, and we're here to talk about the NASA LEGO competition. It's called NASA's Missions, Imagine and Build. And uh, it's currently open and running through uh, July 31st. Um, we are here today to talk about the competition. You can also check it out on rebrick.lego.com. But let me introduce you to the folks here, um, the team. We have Leland Mel Melvin, who's uh, head of the Office of Education and former shuttle astronaut, CCC. And then we have uh, April Ladotte, who is the Education Einstein Fellow here, and she works in the Aeronautics Mission Directorate. And then we have some folks over in um, Legoland. Just kidding. It's Lego, the Lego group. Uh, Sarah Moore we have in Connecticut. And we also have Freddie Hoff, who is coming to us from Denmark. So welcome everybody who's just joining us. Um, one of the things that, uh, as I mentioned, there is a NASA LEGO partnership and the competition is one of the things that we have done. But something else that we have done and you can still engage with it and that is we and LEGO put LEGO bricks up on the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. And up there, the astronauts were able to show folks uh, physics concepts and how things work in space versus on the ground. And there's lots of cool video on it. And you can take a look at that at legospace.com. That's legospace.com. And uh, But we have somebody here who could actually talk to us about what the space station is all about and why it's important. Leland? Right, so I flew on the space station in 2008 and 2009 and had the most incredible time. We installed the, uh, the Columbus Laboratory, the European Space Agency's big laboratory to do materials processing research, to do human research, uh, you know, physics on how the blood goes through your body, your hearing, your vision, all these different things. So if we go to Mars one day, we can use that, that platform as a test bed to figure out how people will live on Mars for up to a year and a half or so. And so up on Space Station right now we have astronauts, I think I posted a video on, uh, on Twitter this morning of Karen Nyberg washing her hair. You know, how do you wash your hair now? I didn't have that problem in space because I, you know, I had kind of a low cut here, but 
how, how do you do these things, these biological things in space? And this, this test bed is going to be the platform that helps us get to other planets one day. So Kevin Ford, who's one of my astronaut buddies, took a Mindstorms robotics kit and created a gyro in space. And that gyro is similar to the control moment gyros. There are four of them that are spinning that allow the station to be in a particular attitude or orientation, so pitch, yaw, and roll as it's going around the planet at 17,500 miles per hour every 90 minutes. And so this is one of the things that we can see how these Lego bricks work in space, but how they would then work under a gravitational field on the planet. And so we have education guides for, for teachers, for students to work with. You can compare the difference so that as you're building your vehicles, your future vehicles, you have to think about how would this vehicle work in a zero-G environment. And so those are some of the things that we use Space Station for to help us trick out how we would build vehicles, build um, uh, you know, hardware, and also have people working and living on this platform and for future platforms. Awesome. Um, and like I said, uh, the video of Kevin doing that is on legospace.com, so you can see him working with that Lego gyro. It's really cool. So Very check cool. that out. So Very check cool. that out. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to go back to some questions. Uh, we have one from Facebook. And this is probably a good one for our LEGO team. And the question is, how many entries have you received so far? So far, we've only received a handful of entries. But we're hopeful that there will be much more by the end of the month. So that also means if you're looking to enter, um, Competition's kind of low right now. <laughs> so come one, come all. That's what she's saying. Yeah. Okay, and and remember, uh, it does take a little bit of time to put these together. So we're really anticipating a lot to come in in the next 15 days. So make sure your entry is one of them. Okay, so now just, we're going. To I just want to. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to add that. The, we've, we have had to, to, to disqualify certain entries because they didn't follow the rules. So make sure to, to, to read the rules and um, you know, to give yourself enough time for the entry so that you can fix if there is, a, if there is an issue um, where you didn't follow the, the official rules. Freddie, I have a question for you. If someone doesn't follow the rules, will you notify them that there's a problem with their entry? Yes. Okay. Yes, we will. Great. So that's another reason to make sure you get it in on time right. and early so that they can catch those. You know, it might be a small mistake, but something that right. we just can't, you know, have with the contest. So make sure you turn it in early. Okay, time to get back to some more questions. And uh, the f next one is a Google Plus from Google Plus. And that is from, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but Pensham. And uh, here's the question. What do you want to see in this competition? And do we get free Lego parts? <laughs> I wish. OK. Um, anybody would like to take that question? I'll take the first part. And so what we want to see in the competition is we want to see ideas that are based on something that could possibly work in the future. Now, like we said, it doesn't have to be a working model, but we do want to see that your entry fits in with what kinds of things we're working on. So, for example, if you if you check out what, uh, what NASA is working on for aeronautics, and you can do that right off of the NASA site, or you can also go to aeronautics.nasa.gov, what you'll find is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to help airplanes fly safer. We're helping that we want them to fly faster. We want less fuel emissions. Um, but we need them all to be able to work together and be able to fly in the same airspace. So we need them to, we need them to function well with one another. So when we talk about that, we want to see that you have a great idea, but you have a great idea that you think would fit with what kinds of things are actually in existence right. and could right. realistically, you know, be placed into, you know, into our future aeronautics. And same with the with the space component as well. There's a little more flexibility in the the space competition because when you're sending it out there you're not necessarily coordinating with with other spacecraft once you get out past Earth's orbit you can 
pretty much go wherever you need to go. But when but we you talk, may, of, but you may have a constellation of spacecraft going out to do a mission together. Exactly, and so, that's a possibility too. Yeah, and as we go and looking at uh, retrieving an asteroid, how do we build a vehicle that uses solar electric propulsion? That's one of the things that we're looking at doing right now to to give us a propulsion system that can get us out there grab the asteroid, bring it back to cislunar orbit so that we can send astronauts on Orion up there to actually mine the asteroid and think about how we can protect our planet in case, like on my birthday, uh, February 15th this past year, there was a, a meteorite that hit in Russia that could have caused much more damage than it did. So we want to be able to look out there and see if there's something coming towards us that we can actually mitigate or move out into a different orbit so that it doesn't impact the planet and take out our civilization. So those are some of the things that we're looking at doing at NASA to ensure that we are, have a future. And that's about building the future. Exactly. Imagining and building the future. Imagining and building that's the future. That's right. This okay. is what we're talking about at this competition, <laughs> aren't we? Um, but the second part of that question was about the free Lego bricks. And before we have our Lego folks answer that question, there another question came in that has a little bit to do with that as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that question out as, to our LEGO folks, and um, it's through the Google Plus. Where can I go, where can I go build the model for the competition online? And that may um, be part of your answer, Freddie or Sarah. Yeah, so regarding free LEGO bricks, um, we don't. We aren't really giving those away unless you count the prizes for the competition, which do include um, Lego bricks. But if the concern is whether or not you don't have bricks to build a model with, uh, we recommend entering the Inventing the Future of Flight competition, since that competition is open for a digital model to be created. And the software that you would use is completely free, provided by the LEGO group, called LEGO Digital Designer. And to download that to build your prototype, you can actually go to rebrick.com and click the banner and go through to the Imagine uh, Inventing the Future of Flight competition. You can also just try searching for it, and that should take you to the direct download page on uh, lego.com. Awesome. Now, I'm a, I'm a Mac user. Does it work on a Mac also, Mac and PCs? I believe so, yes. Okay. It does. So I want to build, I might build tonight. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, Microsoft and the Mac, um, believe it or not, we have a question from a B. Gates. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no lie, B. Gates um, from <laughs> Google+. And here's what B. Gates wants to know. Does it have to be a plane or rocket, or can it be a lander or a satellite? Oh, good question. April, would you like to take that? I sure will. <laughs> so it can be pretty much anything you can think of. So the aircraft is obviously something that would, that would fly in Earth's atmosphere. But no, it doesn't have to be. It can be a satellite, a lander, a rocket. You could even build a lunar outpost or anything that's going to take us out past Earth's orbit. So it doesn't have to be a transportation device unless it's the aircraft. That's the only one that has to be a, you know, a vehicle. But in terms of the space, the space one, it can be anything you can imagine that belongs out past Earth's orbit. So, great question. Thank you, B. Gates. Um, we, have, we have several more, but I just want to make sure that the folks who have just joined us realize that we are talking about the NASA LEGO competition called a NASA's Missions Imagine and Build. I'm Debbie Rivera, head of the NASA LEGO Partnerships. With me today is Leland Melvin, head of our education office here at NASA. And we have April Lenat, and she's uh, one of our Education Einstein Fellows who works in the aeronautics area. We also have um, our LEGO folks, and that is uh, Sarah Moore. Uh, she's here with us in the United States and Connecticut, as well as Freddie Hoff from Denmark. Okay, we have only about maybe 12 minutes left, so I wa really want to get these questions get in. Good questions in. Come on, guys. Well, come on. And okay. Good questions. All right. From um, Google Plus, Peter is asking, can you elaborate on inspired originality? What does that really mean? Sure. I can do that one. Go, April. So, so one of the things that we want to do is we want to see what you can come up with on your own. However, like I just said, 
we want we want models that fit in with uh, with what we're doing right now. So, for example, if you take a look at what aeronautics is working on, we're working on aircraft that fly perhaps faster than the speed of sound. We're looking at new model, new shapes. We have lots of composite structures, and so we're able to come up with new designs. But we want to know that your model, that your design, would fit into what's going on, what's really going on. So when we talk about inspired, what we really mean is more, in a way, almost informed creativity. So we want to know that you have an idea of what's going on in the first place and how your design can fit in with what's already going on. So we want you to be creative. We don't want you to build what we've already built, but we want it to fit in with everything else we're doing. And where you can get that information about what NASA is doing, again, is on www.nasa.gov. Okay, um, we have another question. What if you build your model? How do you, do you send it in as a physical model, or do you use pictures, or how, how do you do the entry application? Sarah Freddy, maybe? Do they post I'll take um, that one? Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry, what do you do? The, okay, great. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. Um, what you do is you actually um, you put the, the you um, you submit it to Rebrick, which is a social bookmarking website, which means that you have to pretty much submit your photo onto an image hosting platform such as Flickr or PhotoBucket, and then bookmark it is what we call it when you submit a link uh, directly onto Rebrick within the building challenge category. That way we we know you're entering the competition and we can evaluate it properly. It's, uh, it's all described in the rules and I think one of the things is a key factor is that to, to, to make sure you get a good image. So when you take a photo of, of the, the creation that you built, make sure to, to have the lighting right and, and to take a picture that really shows off the best of what you built. Terrific. And again, that uh, the rules and all the how-tos are on www. Well, I don't even think you do, do the W's anymore. It's rebrick.lego.com. Okay, that's where you can get that information. Okay, moving on. Trenton, through Google+, Plus would like to know, how many entries can you submit? Is there, is there a limit, uh, Freddie? Yes, on how many there is. Okay. Uh, so you can only submit one entry per contest. So that means one by the end of July 15 for the competition called NASA's Missions Imagine and Build. Okay, great. And um, Badushi from Google Plus is asking, can we participate solo or do you have to be in a team? And uh, Leland, what do you think? I think you can either go solo if you want to, or you can be part of a team. I think up to five people on the team. And if you get a team bigger than five, then you have to break it off and create two teams. I think that's what mm -hmm. April told me earlier. So, uh, but, but just be very, very creative. And if, if you have maybe one person working on one part of the vehicle, one person working on another part, you can combine those efforts to make this super, super really cool uh, design that we're going to give you some thumbs up for. Awesome. So th with that, Tammy from Google Plus says or asks, are there going to be new Lego products or kits that come out of this competition? Ready? Um, well, that's interesting. Um, this is not <laughs> something that we are planning at, at this point, but I'll have to say that you never know what's going to happen. So. Um, you know, if something is, is, is amazing, that's obviously worth considering. And, and we would, of course, work, sorry, we'd, of course, work closely with um, the person sum who submitted the design if we chose to pursue, to pursue that path. <laughs> exactly. Now, let me ask you all a question, then, uh, from the studio, Debbie Rivera, question. Um, can the winner of this competition put their model on the Kuzo site? Absolutely. There's, ab there's no problem with that. And for those who don't know about Lego Kuso, it's a platform where you can, it's a crowdsourcing platform where users can submit ideas from new Lego sets. And if an idea reaches 10,000 supporters, um, it will be considered for a potential Lego set. And that's actually how the two prizes for the um, Imagine Our Future 
right, Beyond Earth competition um, came from. The Hayabusa and the Mars rover were submitted by a fan and are now in the process of becoming sets. Awesome. And I, th I think the goal of the, of the fans and the students and everyone out there is to just blow Lego's socks off. And, you know, your inventive, creative, you know, design may make them want to call you right away once they see it. So, you know, use your brains, be creative, be so, you know, have some really cool stuff that they won't want to turn you down. Okay. And that is definitely uh, something to remember for sure. <laughs> Um, another uh, question came in uh, from this time YouTube, and it is, does it matter if you are not American to enter this competition? And Sarah, would you like to answer that one for us? Sure. Um, that does not matter at all. Uh, we, we talked to someone earlier who's interested in entering from Mexico, and that is most countries trees unless it's already unless it's prohibited there by law um, it's completely fine to enter and you can find a list of the few countries where there might be complications in the rules by going to rebrick.com and clicking that banner on the front page cool that's very good okay and here is uh, another question from Google Plus and that is where did the idea of using Lego to construct models for NASA come from Great question, and that has come from the, really, the team effort that we have done between NASA and LEGO over the last few years. Um, NASA and LEGO came together maybe about five years ago, I think, with our very first ag agreement to form a partnership, and we've done uh, a myriad of things uh, from that time. We've talked about one of them, which is putting LEGO bricks up on the space station where astronauts can use them to talk about physics um, and other things that just can't happen on Earth. And then this competition is just another way to, uh, again, give an opportunity for both organizations to have a mutually exclusive, I mean, um, a mutually beneficial, a mutually beneficial type of um, outcome for the projects that we do. So it's a team approach from both NASA and LEGO. Okay, we have one time for one more question. Do we have one more question? Cindy, my assistant off camera who is <laughs> blushing again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if we don't, that's okay. Um, I just want to um, remind everybody that uh, we have done this Google Plus Hangout so that we can talk about the upcoming, well actually it's ongoing, the NASA Missions Imagine and Build competition. It is open and it is going to end on July 31st. Uh, that means there's only 15 more days before you can get an entry in. If you guys go to rebrick.lego.com, you can get all the information, the uh, competition rules, what we're looking for, what the prizes are going to be, so please do that. Um, as April has said, you know, what we're looking for is really informed designs. And in order to have informed designs, what do we have to do? We have to know what NASA does. Exactly. We've got to know. you got to know. So you can find out more about the NASA missions, whether it's um, space related, like uh, Leland has been had the opportunity to be in space, and um, or if it's uh, doing the aeronautic uh, aspect of the competition, but check us out on www.nasa.gov for that kind of information. Um, Debbie, can I add one quick thing as well? <sighs> yes, of course, April. So if you have more questions, um, the rebrick.lego.com site, you can actually ask questions. So after we're finished today, if you think of some questions that you forgot to ask or you go to the site and you still have some questions, uh, just post them there, and then they can be answered. So don't worry. This isn't your last chance to ask any questions. All right. And, if you, and also, if you want to learn more about NASA education, go to www.nasa.gov slash education, where you can see other activities that you can do along with this competition, um, whether it's building rockets or this exploration design challenge. And it's for teachers. It's for students. It's for grandparents. It's for the whole K through gray. So check out nasa.gov slash education. Um, wait a minute, nasa.gov slash education 
or other types of activities you can do. Great. Um, and uh, Freddie or Sarah, would you like to give any closing comments? Well, just remember that um, you have 15 days, so um, get building. It's, uh, it's two very, very cool competitions. Go to rebrick.com to, to see all the rules, and as April just said, um, you can ask questions there if there's anything you find that's not answered in, in, in the rules. So um, you can write, and either Sarah or I will get back to you um, explaining those exact rules. So start building. Because we... Because we want to load up his desk. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much for um, being with us. Bye-bye. Thank you.